Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my entire Canadian-based stock portfolio on Wealth Simple Trade. So today's video is gonna be a complete portfolio review. I'm gonna be showing you guys everything that's in my portfolio. I'll show you guys all the stocks I hold. I'll show you guys the stocks I'm buying, and I'll show you guys the total return of all my stocks, and we will be adding one brand new stock inside the dividend growth-based portfolio in today's video. So this is gonna be a bit of a longer video than usual, so I do apologize, guys. So make sure you grab yourself a cup of coffee, sit down, uh, relax, and get comfy because we're gonna be going through all my portfolios. All Everything is gonna be included inside this video. So there's gonna be lots to cover. So let's get the ball going. Let's not waste any time. And let's start things off with a quick little portfolio update. Hey, guys, what's up? How's it going? We'll do the portfolio updates really quickly here to start off the video. So we'll do the tax-free savings accounts first. I'll do my TFSA here in Wealth Simple Trade. We'll click through here. I'll give you guys an update on the portfolio it's been doing. And then we'll go inside each individual your portfolio and we'll talk about the stocks inside each portfolio that we have. So it's going to be a bit of a long video like I mentioned earlier. So here's the TFSA, my own personal TFSA and Wolf Simple Trade. We have $108,000 in total. Um, we'll do the all-time return first. So this TFSA is up 15% all-time. That's about $14,000. So nice little gain there um, inside our TFSA. We'll take a quick little peek uh, over the recent returns though. We've seen a negative one dip in the past week, negative sorry, negative 2% dip in the last week. That's about $2,000. Lots of that coming from the Canadian markets as well as a little bit of the US markets today. And the one month return is down negative 2%. So in most recent um, returns, we've seen that the portfolio has dropped a little bit. Nonetheless, the portfolio is still going strong. And here's the stocks inside the portfolio. So this portfolio is mostly focused on US growth as the main feature. We do that with the S&P 500. So VFB is going to be the biggest holding inside this portfolio, um, sitting at about 50% of the portfolio. And then the other stocks we have here, we have XEI, which is a small holding of the Canadian um, dividend income-based ETF. And you, can, you guys can see that this one's down negative 4%. So a lot of the, the income stocks in Canada, a lot of the Canadian dividend stocks actually took quite a bit of a hit recently. VDYs, um, Another big hit there, but nonetheless, it's still performing quite well. Um, some of the individual stocks like TD, TELUS, most of these, if you guys are going to be holding them inside your portfolio, are probably sitting in the negative if you're a newer investor. But if you've been investing in the long run, hopefully you're doing a not too bad. Um, TELUS is a big one, down negative 16%. That one's dropped quite a bit. Um, a lot of different opinions about TELUS. I still think it's a good company long term, but of course, you know, there's always risk with individual stocks, especially when they're dipping like this. You guys are going to have to decide for yourself if it's worth buying right now. We have our cover call ETFs for some passive income. They're doing their thing. They're doing okay. And then we have Fortis um, kind of doing its thing. Uh, FTN, a financial um, split share corp. This is just a small holding. Once again, this is kind of like me just kind of playing around, getting some more passive income inside the portfolio. It's really such a small amount. It doesn't make a super significant difference, but it does allow me to generate more passive income for the portfolio. And then we have the big old classic um, dividend stocks like CNR, ATD, um, which has done really well for me. And then AQN as well, another stock that's been hit pretty hard. And if you look at the watch list here, you guys can see like even today, um, it is Tuesday at the time of doing this video. You guys might see it Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on when it's published, but the markets are down quite a bit even today. So um, yeah, uh, nonetheless, it always presents a good buying opportunity. So even though the market's down, um, there's nothing to worry about. So just really quickly, I want to take a little break to mention that if you guys want to see all the holdings and all my stocks I hold inside all my portfolios, be sure to check out Blossom Social. You guys can download the app. It's completely free to do so. Then you guys can navigate to, get to my portfolio. You guys can follow me, see all the stocks I'm posting. You guys can see all my buys. Everything on there is 100% transparent for you guys to see on Blossom Social. So check it out. There's a link in the description of today's video. And from my experience in investing, what I've noticed with the other beginners as well is one of the biggest challenges that beginners have is, you know, a market falling. Like, what do you do when the market falls? How is that supposed to feel? It doesn't feel very good, right? So what you have to do, guys, is remember that if you're investing in good quality companies and good quality quality stocks, it's just part of the way things go. So I always recommend, you know, start off slow, take things slow, work your way up, get a feel for how the market works, and then as you guys get more comfortable and you learn how things go, you can continue, you can, can, can kind of pick it up and get into confidence. But it really takes time, and that's why I recommend that you guys focus on good quality stocks, focus on buying the market, and it's going to give you the confidence to keep pushing through. The next account we're going to talk about is going to be my fiance's TFSA. Um, so this is a smaller TFSA that we're working on building up right now. So you guys can see this on passive. We have about $22,000 inside her TFSA. Um, we'll zoom in here so you guys can see the actual holdings and see a, a 
clear picture of how the portfolio is structured. So this is very similar to my own personal uh, portfolio, just a little bit different. It's a little bit more uh, focused on income, just a slightly little bit, and there's no individual stocks. It's 100% ETF focused. So if you guys want to make like an ETF based portfolio, this is an easy way to do it. There's nothing wrong with that. So we have the, once again, VFE being a big uh, portion of our TFSAs. We want to have a lot of growth inside the TFSAs. I think, you know, US stocks are some of the growth stocks you can, uh, the best growth stocks you can get. And I like to have like a little bit of diversification inside our portfolios. Um, the second one is VDY, which is her ETF that we went with for the Canadian markets, about 35%. So again, a um, little more income focused inside this portfolio, but VDY does offer some good growth as well. So it's like a combination of the two. And then the last little bit, which is about 15% is going to be some of the covered call higher income funds. And that's what we went with, with this portfolio. So, and here's a portfolio pie. You guys can see like, you know, 50% of VFE, 35% of VDY. And then we have some small holdings of some of the uh, covered call uh, ETFs and a split share corp fund. So um, again, very basic portfolio, very simple, uh, but that's the way we like it. And I just want to mention really quickly, guys, that there's nothing wrong with having a simple portfolio that's a robo-advisor, even just using ETFs. It's a great way to invest, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a very valid way to invest, so don't let anybody tell you that having a simple portfolio um, you know, is in superior to having a portfolio that's more complex. Sometimes being simple and having simplicity is really the, the better way to invest. Now that the TFSAs are out of the way, we're going to jump inside my personal account. Now, my personal account is an account I have in Wealth Simple Trade that I've kind of been sitting here for a little while. I do plan on eventually selling some of these positions and then putting them into my fiance's TFSA. Uh, I know I've said that for a while now and we're gonna do that eventually. I just haven't gotten around to doing it, uh, but this eventually will be sold and put inside uh, my our, our TFSA just because we have the extra room. There's no point in me holding in my personal account. We might as well get the tax-free benefits. Um, but this is very similar to my TFSA. It just has a little bit more Canadian individual stocks, uh, but more or less the same. There's a couple more dividend stocks inside here. Some of them have done better than others. This isn't a portfolio that I really have actively been contributing a lot into. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about the returns, uh, But and a lot of it is income focused, but some stocks that have done really well here are like CNQ, um, uh, let's kind of go down here. ATD, obviously. There's just a couple, like it's a good mixture portfolio that's kind of had a mixture of everything. And this is a newer portfolio, so it ha doesn't have the long-term growth that the previous TFSA has. Um, so a lot of these stocks kind of look like they're in the negative, but once again, we're not taking into the dividend uh, in the income returns here. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna be doing a 100% total return of each individual stock that we hold. So you guys can see like 100% the actual total return across all of our accounts. Uh, because you know, when you have accounts that are new, some accounts that are old, you're gonna get a mixture of returns. So I think it's gonna be, it's obviously a lot more smarter to kind of look at the big picture. So that's something we're gonna do. Nonetheless, this is a small account with some mixture of things, eventually gonna transfer into the TFSA because you know, it just makes a lot more sense. So pretty soon uh, this portfolio, this non registered account, the personal account won't, ex won't exist anymore, but it has done well. The all-time return is up 14%. It's up $842. So I'll most likely be selling it, I don't know, maybe within the next couple weeks or so. The biggest tip I can give, give beginners is to maximize some of your tax advantage accounts. So if you guys don't know, the TFSA, the RRSB, and the First Home Savings account are some of the best accounts that you guys can work with. Lots of tax advantage, advantages, so make sure you max them out. And then once you max out your TFSA, your RRSB, and your FHSA, then you guys can work towards a personal non-registered account. And the last account we're going to cover really quickly is going to be the ESSOP. This is for my employer. So I do work for a company called Loblaws and they do have an employee stock by program where basically um, if you contribute into the company stocks, they will match that at a pretty decent rate. And this is a small holding that kind of been growing over time since I've worked there as a, it's my part-time job kind of thing that I do alongside the YouTube channel. And it's about $1,346. And again, like uh, Lobla has gone down quite a bit recently. A lot of the individual Canadian stocks have taken a big dip there um, so again nothing to worry about it's just the way things are going and we're just going to keep um, dollar cost averaging in buying these good quality companies buying the overall markets and we'll take advantage of the dip and once again this account is a very small account it's not a huge holding but it is there and then the last account we're going to talk about is going to be my quest wealth uh, robo advisor if you guys work at a company, it's always important to look at company matches and look at pensions. These are great tools that you guys can use to really build your wealth. They're really a no brainer. And this is something I wish I would have focused on when I was younger, uh, but they're a great way to kind of grow your investments. And if you work at a good quality company, you know, you're really literally just getting free money with an ESSOP or some type of company match or even a pension of some kind. So if you guys can focus on that stuff, this is something I wish I would have focused on. Definitely take advantage of it.
And the last portfolio I'm going to do a quick little update here is going to be the Quest Wealth portfolio. So this is a new portfolio I started about a month ago. I'm doing a case study to see how their RoboAdvisor is doing. So, you know, RoboAdvisor is good for people who are looking to have a passive way of investing. So this is a growth portfolio and I'm going to be doing an update probably within the next couple of weeks to give you guys an update on the account. But here's just a quick little sneak peek here. So you put $1,000 to start the portfolio off because you need $1,000 to open one. And it's a 80% equity portfolio with 20% fixed income. So it's fairly growth oriented. You can see the different percentages of the different equities here um, but nonetheless I don't expect this portfolio to be really doing well anytime soon because it's brand new and the markets are trending downwards so it's probably gonna be a little while and we're gonna be putting maybe a little bit of money here and there inside this portfolio but it's obviously not a big portfolio it's more of a case study to do for you guys uh, but obviously the all-time return is nine hundred eighty three dollars so we're sitting down about negative 17 bucks but I want to give you guys a quick little update on this and I will be doing a more thorough um, overview of these different funds. So we got a bunch of different ETFs that they put in here. And again, like they're they're kind of doing their thing here. So, but I don't expect to get a lot of gains from this portfolio anytime soon. Uh, but it is something I, I, I haven't done an update for a, a little while. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick little update so you guys can see how the uh, RoboAdvisor has been performing. So I've been looking for a new utility company to add inside our dividend growth portfolio because we don't have one yet. We have a nice kind of mixture of different sectors and different stocks so far. But in today's video, I'm going to be adding CNQ, that's Canadian National Resources, inside of our dividend growth based stock portfolio in my RRSP. So let's do a quick little overview of CNQ, that's Canadian National Resources stock. So this is a brand new stock. Like I mentioned, we're going to be adding inside of our RRSP, which is our dividend growth based portfolio. We need a utility company, a gas oil company. So we're going to go with CNQ. Um, so quick little updates here. So we have $83.74. It trades on the TSX and the ticker is CNQ in case you guys didn't know. And going through here, we can see that the stock performance has been quite well. Uh, past five years, the stock has been on a pretty big tear going up 84%. Um, even in the year to date from 2023, it's up 17%. So the stock has done quite well. Dividend yield is 4.3%. So it is a pretty well established dividend company like most of the utility companies are. But a few things I want to point out really quickly on why I like this stock is number one, it's got huge dividend increases. If you head on over to dividend history, we can see a steady increase of dividends. Uh, 2022, it had two major dividend increases and this is mostly because the company had huge earning increases in 2021, I think it was in 2022 and 2020. So the company just has been like really um, doing well in terms of earnings over the past couple of years. So that's what gives them that room to increase the dividend. Uh, and then even before then, just steady dividend increases like double digit, which is what we want to see. And for a yield at 4%, that's pretty impressive. Now, when a company is doing things like this, we want to make sure, you know, they have a low payout ratio. We want to make sure they have good earnings. So we do see the company increasing in terms of earnings uh, on a regular basis. So that's pretty good. We see the payout ratio is at 52%, which tells us that, you know, there's, there is wiggle room, right? And the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio is at 12 right now. So, you know, kind of suggests that the company might be undervalued. If we look at back at the stock um, in terms of growth, we might see that, you know, it might seem a little bit price fairly high. Uh, but, you know, with a company that's growing in terms of revenue, a company that's growing in terms of different things like that, I don't think it's a big deal. I still think, you know, with a lower P PE ratio that the company technically has some more room to grow. So I think it's a good, a good long term to buy a good long term stock to hold and buy. So that's the stock we're going to be adding inside of a portfolio today. And as you guys know, I like to be fully transparent on this channel. So I show you guys all my updates, everything I do inside my portfolio. So if you go inside our RRSP account here, uh, we can see our different positions here. So I don't think I actually did a update on the RRSP earlier. So I, I think I missed the RRSP, but this is our dividend growth, pay, a Canadian dividend growth based portfolio. So you have ATD in here, we have CNR in here, we have Dollarama and then TD. So a nicer mixture here. Um, some of the stocks are doing okay. Like I mentioned, most of the stocks are gonna be down quite a bit. TD being the one that's down the most. Um, but we have $50 today that we're gonna put in CNQ. So if we're gonna add this inside a portfolio, we can scroll to the top here. Um, we can go to CNQ. So we can type CNQ. We want Canadian National Resources right here. We're gonna go through here, select the RSP, and because we don't have $83, we just have $50 to buy this week, we're gonna do a fractional buy. So we'll put $50 Canadian in here, we'll buy CNQ, we'll put that through, and now we have CNQ inside of a portfolio. So we're just gonna do a quick little refresh here, and we can see here that we now have uh, about five stocks inside of our RSP account. So it's slowly growing, it's slowly getting there, um, and this has been a fun little portfolio to build with you guys.
So in terms of the stocks that we bought inside our portfolio for this month, we actually haven't added too much recently. We've just been buying our main stocks, our main ETFs, kind of dollar cost averaging in. We haven't had a lot of free money to put in other than the dividend investments uh, that we got for the month. So not not too much new there other than the uh, the new stocks I've been buying inside my RSP. That's pretty much all I've been doing inside our portfolios. Nothing crazy, nothing new, just kind of doing the same old. And of course, you know, if you guys have been watching the RRSP, the dividend growth investing case study update, that's pretty much what I've been buying for this month so far. And to give you guys a quick little overview of all the dividend payments inside the account, we'll give you guys an update for the year as well as an update for August so far. So here's our dividend history on passive. Uh, we can see we have an average dividend of $430 in total for the year. And here's the different stocks. It's a cool little feature. You can put your mouse over. You can see the different payments from each individual stock. So August, we got a total of $318 in terms of dividends. Um, so that's POW, XEI, HYLD being our biggest dividend, uh, HDIV, VDY, and then FTN. And we can scroll down once again to kind of see the different dividends from all of our, you know, basically which stocks are paying the most dividends. And this is a year to date kind of thing. So that's a cool little feature. Um, year to date, we do have 3,000. 3, I don't know if you guys can see that number on the screen, but $3,324 in terms of dividend income. And July obviously was a pretty big month for us. You know, we hit $651. It was the biggest month by far we ever had. So, you know, and that's every quarter, right? Every single quarter we have our big ones from our ETFs. And then we have our individual stocks and our monthly ETFs kind of bumping up too. So August was $318 so far. Uh, June was 326 so hopefully we can beat that but nonetheless you know the portfolio is slowly growing and if we go all time we can actually see the dividends just you know like compounding and growing and we're already for 2023 we're not even all the way done the year we're on the eighth month we still have four months to go and we already beat um, our 20 2000, 2022 um, dividend income so that's super cool so we're slowly getting there guys it's slowly growing over time and I think it'd be cool to give you guys a regular update. You guys seem to like the regular weekly updates on the markets. So here's a quick little update on the TSX heat map. You guys can find this by going to the Google. Just type in TSX heat map and it shows you uh, all the different stocks for the week. You can select the different time period. I select seven days. So we'll just go for the last week or so. We can see which stocks are doing good and which stocks aren't doing good. So we'll just do a quick little recap here. We'll look at take a peek at our portfolio. So most of the energy and utility companies actually are doing not too bad in the past week. We've seen a nice little increase. Uh, railroads have gone down a little bit industrials have gone down a little bit as well as um, rental distribution truckings and different things like that um, kind of go down here we see a lot of red in the financials as well as insurance so anything in finances insurance is really seeing red right now so you know if you're interested in picking up the banks or anything like that I mean the bank stocks and a lot of those are always going to be good stocks to buy you might, might be looking at some of them. So if you like TD or uh, RBC, um, even some of these uh, fi other financial companies might be a good time to kind of take a peek at them. And a lot of the consumer defensive stocks have actually, we've seen a little bit of dip as well. Loblaw, Dollarama, um, Metro, um, ATD is doing kind of okay there. Um, I don't know why ATD.B is in there. That's kind of strange, but um, that one's in there. So those ones have done, taken a little bit of dip as well. And then a telecommunications company, obviously, um, some of these ones have, have went down quite a bit too. So just a quick little recap, mostly overall, depending on the overall market, we're seeing a bit of a dip. Um, we should zoom out 30 days as well and kind of see, and this take, you know, gives you a better picture. Like here's the bigger picture, right? Like past 30 days, lots of red across the board, except for some of these um, energy and oil and gas companies. They're, they're doing okay, uh, but everything else is in the red. So um, yeah, just quick little update on that guys. But uh, once again, lots of opportunities to buy more stocks. So just keep trucking along, keep buying good quality companies, keep buying the markets and you guys will be fine. And now we're going to be moving on the total return section of the portfolio. So like I mentioned, guys, I'm going to show you guys the total return of all the stocks, all the ETFs, everything inside of a portfolio, um, like I mentioned earlier. Now, this is the biggest and most important thing to understand is total return matters because it shows you the total return with absolute clarity of your entire portfolio. So always look for a total return. And it's something that a lot of people don't talk about or they don't even show online. It's important to understand with 100% certainly how your portfolio is performing. So let's jump inside the total return and I'll show you, show you guys how our stocks have really been doing uh, since we first started investing. And I did promise you guys I would do a total return for our entire portfolio. So once again, I do apologize for the long video, but I wanted to add a lot of value and I haven't done a thorough portfolio update for quite a while. So here's the all-time return. Here's the all-time return, all of our stocks inside all of our portfolios. Um, the only thing that's not included in here is gonna be the Quest Wealth portfolio. For some reason, it doesn't link 
with Wealthica, but everything else does here. So here's their entire portfolio, $139,000. Um, this is all of our portfolios combined together. So we can see how our, our stocks have basically performed all time uh, with everything kind of av averaged out together. And I do apologize for using all these different trackers, all these different different tools. I've yet to come across a tool that really does everything. Um, so I'm trying to kind of like use different ones to kind of uh, put this all together. So sorry about the confusion, guys. And let me know if you guys want me to kind of put a list of tools um, I, 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 like I recommend or something like that. In fact, I might actually do a video or do a post or something like that on my blog and show you guys a list of different tools that you guys can kind of check out if you need some help with some of this stuff. But anyways, let's zoom in here. And um, we have the stock ticker on the left side here. And then we have the total gain here in dollar amount and the total gain in percentage amount here. And then we have the revenue, which is the dif distributions or dividends. Um, so the big one you want to take a peek at is a total return because uh, that's the biggest thing we're focused on. But keep in mind, you know, if you're a dividend investor or if you're looking for passive income, you might want to pay attention to the revenue as well. But we're gonna just going to look at the total return. So VFE, the S&P 500 for us, total return all time of 11.35%. It's been doing quite well. Uh, VDY, total return 12%. Um, our cover call ETF HYLD is going to be up 3.58%. Uh, TD is actually doing okay once again, even though it looks bad uh, because we've held it over the years and you get that compound growth, you get those dividend increases, you get the dividends being reinvested. This is where you see that growth come over the long term, right? Um, so TD up 13%, Elementation Kustar, our best performing stock, up 31%. Uh, CNR is breaking even at about zero. Algonquin Power and Utilities is down as well as TELUS. So um, these are the two individual stocks inside our portfolio that are down the most. And both these companies are struggling right now. So you guys can kind of decide for yourself what you want to do with this. I'm a big fan of buying the markets just in case if these kind of situations happen. Once again, you know, TELUS is a pretty good company, but we don't know what's going to happen. So you have to decide for yourself. You're going to have to do your due diligence and decide if you're going to keep investing into the company. Um, but, you know, Algonquin Power Utilities and TELUS are our ones that are beaten up the most so we're kind of holding off on them i would say tell us is probably maybe a better buy maybe a safer buy algonquin power utilities is kind of in a tough spot right now and this is a stock i'm gonna to have to decide in the future the near future if i want to just sell it now or and put it into something else or if i want to keep it so uh, i'm gonna i'm kind of deciding and figuring it out for now but we're just going to keep it keep it keep it at where it is um hdiv our um canadian based cover call etf across all of our accounts is up 1.79 percent Loblaws is on here. Uh, for some reason, it does not report um, with my computer share account really well with Wealthica, so just ignore that. Um, FTN is up 1.77%. Fortis is up 4.34%. XCI is down negative 3.56%. Uh, a lot of those Canadian dividend stocks um, down quite a bit. Keep in mind, some of these stocks like XCI, FTN, um, HDIV, and even HYLD, some of these are newer holdings inside our portfolio. So they're kind of, you know, Unfortunately, I can't show you guys the, the history of which stocks are newer and older, but just kind of keep in mind, some of them are newer, some of them are older. Um, the older held ones or the longer held ones are gonna have more more gain naturally, right? Uh, POW up 1.49%, CNQ up 25%, so that's been a really good one for me. Um, Canadian Tire down negative 1.7%, and Dollarama, um, a new holding inside our portfolio down negative 0.16%. So that's the total return of all of our stocks um, averaged across all of our portfolios. Um, and you guys can kind of see. And once again, guys, if you guys want to see all my, all the stocks I hold, my entire portfolio, check it out on Blossom Social. You guys can see everything 100% on there. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more videos. Take care. Have yourself a good week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry about the length. It was a bit, little bit on the long side. But anyways, guys, take care. Have yourself a good one, and I'll see you guys later.